in the last stream we were working on pushing our way through further into astral sorcery we crafted this starlight infuser and set up the multi-block structure around that starlight infuser to allow us to craft the thermal expansion machine frames and right at the end of the last stream we set up the blood magic altar upgraded it to a tier three altar and that today is going to allow us to make the steel casing from mechanism now the reason that I want that isn't actually to get into mechanism, at least not just yet. Instead, my plan for today's stream is going to be to see if we can get a basic applied energistics system up and running so that we can replace the simple storage network that we have here. The reason that we want to do that is that in this pack, the simple storage network mod has been nerfed a little bit. It's a little weaker than it normally would be. And applied energistics, even without the nerf to simple storage, is just a more powerful storage mod that's going to allow us to do a lot more. It's going to allow us to import and export items easily. It's going to allow us to craft uh, wirelessly. And it's also, most importantly, going to allow us to auto craft, which I think is going to be crucial for the end game of this pack. So to get into applied energistics, we need, first of all, to complete two quests, and we also need these items here. We need to get ourselves an advanced crafting table. We need to get the steel casing, which of course is why we have that tier three blood altar. We also need to get four large plates made of steel, four pure flux crystals, four engineering processes, and 12 sky stone blocks. And currently, we have none of those. And so I think we'll start with the steel casing here. To get the steel casing, we need to take one of our machine frames and place that into a tier three altar, and then we need to give it 20,000 life points. Now, between streams, I have gone ahead and filled the altar up here. We were at the maximum 10,000 life points inside of it, and I've gone ahead and reset up these modular routers here. I did tweak the polar module. I changed the whitelist from a blank slate to an imbued slate. That allows us to just put one stone into the left modular router, and then that one stone will stay in there, and it will cycle through all of the different tiers of slate until it gets to the tier that we're after. For example, if I go ahead and throw this in, it gets placed in, that's gonna transform from regular stone into a blank slate. That blank slate will then get transformed into a reinforced slate, and then that reinforced slate will then get upgraded to an imbued slate. All of that in total costs 8,000 life points, but it gets us these imbued slates here, and we can use these imbued slates to upgrade some of our pre-existing blank runes to capacity runes, because right now, of course, our blood altar can only hold 10,000 life points, and ideally, if we're going to do this craft right here, we'd want to have a blood altar that can hold 20,000 life points. It's not strictly necessary, especially if you can get the life points in fast enough, but it's gonna be much less stressful and just easier in general if we instead just upgrade a couple of our runes here from standard runes to runes of capacity. That's going to allow us to, uh, to hold more LP in the blood altar itself and therefore make it very easy for us to make those steel casings going forward. So just like we saw at the end of the last episode, the runes of capacity here are, for the most part, not too expensive. The only tricky part is those imbued slates. We're gonna go ahead and make five of these, which means I need 15 buckets. I was hoping that would only make one stack. For some reason, that made four stacks when I shift-clicked there. It tried to make 64 and then realized they couldn't stack. That's very odd. Either way, let's go ahead and drop these in. Drop these in, one, two, three, four, and five. Perfect. That should be everything that we need because each one of these as we saw in the last episode, is gonna give us an extra 2,000 life points worth of capacity. And so with five more, that should give us exactly 20,000 life points in the altar. And it does, you can see in the top left and now in the chat that we have 20,000 life points worth of capacity. And now all we need to do is fill this thing up. One thing that I think we should be able to do fairly quickly here is get ourselves an incense altar, this guy right here. This is made with stone, cobblestone, charcoal, or coal, and a weak blood orb, I think the weak blood orb should work in there. It's possible that a higher tier blood orb might be, nope, that totally works, okay, cool. This thing right now isn't gonna do a whole lot for us. Later on, we can make this a much more advanced altar that can give us a, a big boost to our sacrifices. For now though, you'll notice that our sacrificial knife changes color when we are close to the altar, and the idea here is that if we right click whilst our knife is going, it's gonna take all of the hearts that we have and it's gonna put all of those life points instantly into the altar. It just makes it a lot faster. It makes it so that we don't have to keep clicking the knife and it guarantees that we don't die because of course, if we just keep clicking, there is a chance that we lose all of our hearts. Whereas if we just do one right click like this, it will just take us all the way down to one heart and dump all of those life points into the altar. 
So we're almost there. We've got 18,000 life points in here. As per usual, doing this does tear through our meat inside of the meat feeder. And uh, we should have a little bit left, but I did use most of it between streams, making those imbued slates. So I don't really think that there's much left in here. Yeah, not really a lot at all. It does come in fairly quickly, which is, uh, is good. But I'm hopeful that one more use of the dagger here should take us up to 20,000. It does indeed. And then if we throw the machine frame in, that is going to go ahead and get transformed into the steel casing. Again, our speed runes making that hopefully a little bit faster, although that is going to take a few seconds there. That's completely fine. While we let that do its thing, I think the next thing that we should probably look to getting is probably the Certus B here, because a lot of the recipes in Applied Energistics 2 require Certus Quartz. Uh, the Charger here requires Flux Crystals. The Flux Crystals are made with Charged Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Redstone. The Presses are all made with Certus Quartz and Certus Quartz Dust. Silicon in this pack, I think initially we're going to get through Certus Quartz Dust. And so there's a lot of Certus Quartz that we're going to need to get. And to get that Certus Quartz, I think we're going to have to get the Certus B. Thankfully, this doesn't seem too difficult. It is another situation where we have to use the egg, but all we need to do here is get a block of Certus Quartz and then have a Nether Quartz B fly over it. Thankfully, in the last stream, we did get uh, two Nether Quartz Bs, and so we should be able to uh, fairly quickly here steal one of those Nether Quartz Bs from, I believe, over in here. Well, that actually is in here. Never mind. We'll take that. Uh, we'll also grab the Nectar Block in just a second using our exchanging gadget. And then as for the first block of Certus Quartz, this we can make by crafting four Certus Quartz Crystals together. And these we can make using our Energizing Orb. And thankfully, it's not too expensive. We just need uh, four Nether Quartz per crystal. Again, we need four crystals in total. So 16 Nether Quartz should be all that we need. And I think in this scenario, it's probably going to be easiest if we just put these in manually. If I go one, two, three, four, we could do it with the uh, modular router, but it means changing the regulator here from one to four and then changing it back again after the fact. And given how fast our energizing orb is, now that we have all of these niotic energizing rods, I really don't think it's going to take us too long here to get ourselves four of these uh, Certus Quartz Crystals. Nice. We'll then craft those over. And that, of course, is going to get us our Certus Quartz B, which I think will probably end up placing down inside of a new apiary. Because right now, we're still doing very well on our centrifuges. These are all processing the combs that we're getting way faster than we're producing them. And so I do think we have the processing capacity to add the third apiary over here and get even more bees, producing even more combs. As I said, let's grab that uh, exchanging gadget, and then let's quickly do one of these, one of these, and then we'll go and grab the nether bee as well once uh, day breaks, and we'll put it in here in place of the Certus Quartz bee. I guess if we're going to do that, I might as well uh, pick up this uh, nether quartz bee here and then do a quick one of these. Perfect. Let's go place that nether quartz bee over in here, and then I'm going to sleep, and we'll see about getting the Certus bee. Boom. And boom. And then I'll pick this guy up for now. Perfect. Um, I did go ahead and get four more Certus Quartz here, just so that as per usual, we can get two of these Certus Quartz Bs. And yeah, as soon as he flies over here, we should be good to go. The Twitch chat has pointed out that we might as well go ahead and kind of straight away see about getting the Silicon Bee here. The Silicon Bee is the same idea, but we have the Certus Quartz Bee fly over. A furnace. That seems pretty straightforward. Of course, for the Certus Quartz B to work here, we do need to get a Certus B Nectar Block. That is going to be two blocks of Nether Quartz Honeycomb and then two more Certus Quartz Blocks. That shouldn't be too difficult for us to do. It uh, does mean, though, that we are going to have to go kind of move the Nether Quartz B back into one of the apiaries and then try and intercept the combs. What I think I might do real quick is uh, go ahead and make another apiary right here put the Nether Quartz Bees into here and start catching those combs before we send them over so that we can use them to make the Certus Quartz Bee Nectar Block. After that, we're of course going to have to make the Silicon Bee Nectar Block as well. And that's the same situation here. We need to get two blocks of Certus Honeycomb. Again, once we have the Certus Bee Nectar Block, we can put that in here, let them do their thing, collect the combs before we connect it up to the centrifuges and then use it to make the Silicon Bee Nectar Block. This does also require 18 silicon uh, for that. We can either smelt Certus Quartz Dust, but we can also, by the looks of it, smelt regular Quartz Dust as well. And so I might just go ahead and uh, quickly grind down 18 Quartz as well into Silicon so that we can very quickly and easily make that uh, Silicon B Nectar Block. All right, so a bit more B work later. We have our two Certus Quartz Bs. We've got 
our Sodus Quartz B Nectar Block, which was just in the ground. And so we have been getting the Sodus Quartz Honeycombs, but I have picked it back up again because, of course, over here, we're going to replace the Nether Quartz Nectar Block with the Sodus B Nectar Block, throw down two furnaces, throw down our Sodus B, and that's going to get us the two Silicon Bees. And I think that's basically everything good on that front. I do have the two blocks worth of Certus Honeycomb. And over here, we also have the uh, 18 Nether Quartz Dust, which is just nine uh, Nether Quartz ground down in the grindstone. And so over here, we can uh, cancel that. Uh, we can swap that out for the Silicon Bee Nectar Block and start. And then people, oh, hold on, I'm, I'm incorrect on that. I need to smelt this, you fool. Um, that is correct, <laughs> champ. Let me go put that into uh, my furnaces over here. I have still been uh, slowly but surely uh, processing our ancient debris into yet more netherite scrap. Uh, the number we're looking for is just over a thousand. Right now we've got 816. So we're somewhat close to being able to upgrade one of our centrifuges to uh, to elite, which we will do at some point in uh, hopefully the not so distant future. Let's go ahead and pick you up. And the Twitch chat has made a good point here that we could probably also look at getting a uh, Fluix B as well. This is going to allow us to get uh, Fluix crystals much, much easier. For this, we just breed together a Nether Quartz B with a Cetus Quartz B, and then the Nectar Block here just requires two Fluix blocks, which we will have to make manually, with two Cetus Honeycomb blocks, which we will be getting from our Cetus B. So now, it's just a case of uh, waiting for this silicon to finish smelting. We can then use that to make the Silicon B Nectar Block, at which point we'll get our Silicon B down over in our new third apiary along with the Cetus B and the Nether Quartz B. Okay, so we have the Silicon B in here, both of them, and we have our Silicon B Nectar Block down, and of course, Silicon is coming in very nicely. Over here, let's go ahead and use our breeder to breed the Nether Quartz B and the Certus Quartz B together. For that, we're going to need, uh, of course, two Nether Quartz and two Certus Quartz. We actually don't have uh, any Certus Quartz just yet. Let me go ahead and uh, kind of throw that in there to get that processing. That is, of course, gonna get clogged up in the system, but we can always go ahead and grab it once it gets clogged up and uh, give it a draw for one, which is easier said than done because we don't have any spare uh, compacting draws over there. Although I do think that we definitely have what it takes to make even more of these. So let's get you down right about here and let's do something like this. And my key is in here. Let's grab that as well and make sure that is uh, fully locked up. Perfect. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put two of these in over here and just leave this kind of working along in the background. While we wait for that, we do have to get the Fluix B Nectar Block. For that, the Sodus Honeycomb Blocks we already have, uh, or we can get, of course, they're still backing up over there. That's not yet connected up to the centrifuge. The two blocks of Fluix here, we're gonna have to make manually first. For that, we need eight Fluix Crystals. These are made by dropping charged Sodus Quartz, Nether Quartz, and Redstone into a puddle next to one another. And so the only thing we don't have there is charged Sodus Quartz. To charge Certus Quartz, that's where we need the Charger from Applied Energistics 2. Now, in somewhat of a catch-22 situation here, it looks like we need the charged Certus Quartz to make that happen. And so I'm wondering if we are... Although, actually, it looks like there is a 10% chance of getting charged Certus Quartz from the, uh, the bees in the centrifuge, which is interesting. So I guess in that case, what I should probably do is I should take the Certus Bee Honeycombs out of here. I do want to keep two blocks around so that we can use those for crafting the Fluix B Nectar Block. But the rest of these here, we can go ahead and just throw directly into our centrifuge like this. And we should have, I think, a fairly decent chance of getting some charged Certus Quartz here. We don't need that much. We did, we got nine, nice. That is gonna require yet another compacting draw, which thankfully, again, isn't gonna be too, too difficult. Let's do uh, this, I should definitely be pressing uh, G to turn my hover mode on. It's not the best hover mode in the world, but it's substantially better than what we have currently. Also, I don't want chicken in there. I want uh, charged soda squats. Perfect. So let's go ahead and take four of those along with four nether quartz. One, two, three, four. Uh, no chicken and four redstone. One, two, three, four. We're then going to drop all of these into a puddle of water. Thankfully, we do have a puddle of water right here, which I think will work. One, two, three. And if you leave it a second, that should convert all of those into Fluix Crystals. Oh, they got picked up by the strain. Oh, okay, never mind. That won't work in that case. Uh, do I still have a pool of water over here? I do. In that case, let's do it over here. We'll do one, two, three. And then if we step back a little bit, we should see all three of those combine 
into Fluix crystals. Nice. We can then craft those into Fluix blocks. And then that should be everything that we need, so long as we get one more uh, bucket of honey to get the Fluix B nectar block. And boom, there we go. Fluix B nectar block. Nice. Over here, we should have at least one, but hopefully uh, maybe two Fluix Bs. Although, never mind. I think we've got uh, almost one Fluix B. Gosh, this thing is so slow compared to, uh, to in-world breeding. The, uh, again, it's the fact that the, the bee box is so good. This is almost done, but I, I feel like it's not worth waiting for it because we do need two of these. And so I feel like the, uh, the better solution here is just going to be to get another nether quartz, get another, uh, Certus quartz and just do it the old fashioned way here because we can uh, use the bee box to instantly reset the, uh, the cooldown on these guys. We can go one and two. Where's he going? Yep. There he is. He came out of the, the hive. Boom. There we go. Those should hopefully breed. It also cost me an extra nether quartz there. I think he waited too long. That's fine. Let's get another uh, nether quartz here. Not that we don't have much of it now. We've got 3,000 thanks to the, uh, the nether quartz bees. And then uh, over here, it should just be a case of using our bee box to reset the cooldown on both these guys. And then we'll do the same again. You and you over here. We've got our Fluix bee. We'll take you. Perfect. And then we should have our second Fluix bee any second now, there he is, perfect. Let's go ahead and grab you as well. Fantastic. And so now I think we're basically good to go on all of the applied energistics to bees. We've got the Fluix bees, which we'll go ahead and drop down. Uh, these ideally want to be adult Fluix bees. And then I'll also, I guess, go ahead and grab those other two bees as well. Might as well use the jars here just a little easier to get them back where we want them to go. And yeah, so we'll let these go and let these work. What I will do is uh, momentarily I'll put you back down. Then as soon as this guy goes in, I'll put the other one back down. I will also go and get this hooked up. We'll get another puller module into our modular router here to pull from this apiary storage. And then we'll also go ahead and make sure that we have storage drawers, of course, for all of the different resources that are going to start coming in so that they can start coming in passively. And uh, we don't really have to worry about it. And then from there, we can start looking at some of the other items that we need. Some of these are not going to be too difficult. First of all, over here, this is done. We have our steel casing. Perfect. We'll take that and we'll drop it in the system for now. And then next up in terms of this uh, ME controller here, we need to get four steel large plates. We do need four pure Fluix crystals, which are not to be confused with the, uh, the standard Fluix crystals that we're getting. Unfortunately, they're going to have to be made in a slightly different manner. And of course, we need that advanced crafting table as well. The advanced crafting table itself isn't too difficult, I don't think. To make it, we do need two basic crafting tables, and each one of those needs two regular crafting tables. So we do need quite a few standard crafting tables to begin with. Thankfully, that is, of course, just standard Minecraft planks, and I think four of those is all we need, but I'll make eight just to be safe. And then in terms of making the basic crafting table, here we need a block of iron, we need four basic components, we need one black iron slate, and then we need one basic catalyst. The black iron slate is two black iron, the basic component is black iron, iron, and luminescence. Luminescence, super easy for us. It's glowstone, redstone, and gunpowder. I'll make a stack of that and dump it in the system. And then the basic catalyst is just four more basic components. So we need eight basic components, basically. And uh, for these, the only thing we're missing is a black iron slate. The black iron slate, made with black iron here, can be made in one of two ways. One way here is we can pull regular molten iron over blank dye. The alternative, though, which, surprise, surprise, is probably going to be the better option for us, is a black iron bee, which doesn't seem to be too difficult. The black iron bee here is just an iron bee over an RGB honeycomb. And we do have some RGB honeycombs lying around from earlier in the playthrough. And so I think very quickly here, we should be able to make that happen. The nectar block for this is uh, two RGB honeycombs and two iron block honeycombs. I think that should be fine. We've got two iron block honeycombs there. And then RGB wise, we don't have two, but we could take one of our RGBs here and uh, get that RGB back down inside of the third apiary, for example. If memory serves me right, I think the RGBB just pollinates on a regular flower. It does indeed. And so we could very easily get that into the uh, third apiary. And that's going to make it fairly straightforward, I think, for us to get black iron. And then from there, that makes getting the advanced crafting table fairly straightforward as well, because the advanced crafting table is the same as the basic crafting table, but just with advanced components, which are made in the exact same way, but just with iron instead of gold. All right, and not too long later, there is our second black iron bee down on the black iron bee nectar block. I have gone ahead and re-picked up the RGB bee here because the RGB is uh, not particularly useful in the apiary setup. You can't run the RGB uh, honeycombs through the centrifuge. You have to craft them into specific dyes, uh, depending on what it is. 
that you want. And so they're useful to have, but not really useful in the apiary setups. And so now that that is done, this blank iron bee is going to start producing uh, blank iron combs for us. And of course, we can use those to, uh, to get the black iron for our advanced crafting table. And once we have that, the only things we're missing now are the steel large plate, the engineering processes, and the pure fluix crystal. The pure fluix crystal could be a good place to start. And we have two options here as to how we want to do this. The default method is this one right here. It says drop a fluix seed made from fluix dust and sand into a puddle of water, and you can make it faster by adding crystal growth accelerators. So the uh, fluix seed is this right here, sand plus fluix dust. You can grind fluix crystals into fluix dust. And then you place this in water. And I want to say it takes like 20 minutes if you don't have any crystal growth accelerators, which is quite a long time. Alternatively, we could look at making an enrichment chamber here, which shouldn't be too difficult. It does mean that we're going to have to get some more steel casing, though. And so you know what? I think we might be able to do it the old-fashioned way. There's also the uh, ability to make crystal uh, growth accelerators. These here are not too expensive, to be fair. And so you know what? Let me get a, uh, a Fluix seed. Let me get uh, a few of these, actually, because you do only get one crystal per fluix seed. So we want to get a grand total of uh, four of these uh, fluix seeds. For that, we're going to want to grab some uh, fluix combs. I do need to set up the uh, puller module there so that these actually do start getting processed automatically. But uh, real quick, if I do this and this, we can then throw these in to hopefully one of these centrifuges. Uh, the reason that we've got so many honeycombs in here now is that I did uh, accidentally leave the fluix bee like down here i thought the apiary was taking a while to breed the fluix bee it turns out it did breed one it just placed it into the apiary storage and then it got pulled by the modular router and it was stuck in here thus blocking all of the uh, combs from getting sent around and um, processed now that i've taken it out there's like a big backlog of stuff that needs to be processed hence why it's uh, it's not working so uh, over here let's do a quick one of these we'll take you out and i don't think we can take that out until it's processed now unfortunately but we'll grind some of these down. I think we only need two Fluix Dust, but just to be safe, I am gonna make, I think, a fair bit extra because there's not really much of a cost in putting more Fluix Seeds into a puddle of water. It still takes the same amount of time no matter how you do it. And so uh, let's take maybe five of these Fluix Dust and we'll craft those with five sand, like so, to get 10 Fluix Seeds. And then for now, I'm just gonna go and throw these in over here. The good news is, is that you can pick these up. You'll see right now it says uh, item won't despawn and it's at 0%. As we leave these in here longer, they will start to go up in percentage. And once they hit 100%, they're going to transform into these uh, pure Fluix crystals. Whilst we wait for that, we can look at making some of these other items because these are going to take a while anyway. The steel large plates are made by pulling four ingots over a steel large plate case. We need four of them in total, which means we just need to get 16 steel and drop that into our smeltery, easy enough, and then we can pull that out over a large plate cast. Right now, we don't have a large plate cast, and I think it is well gonna be worth making one just so that we don't have to keep using the sand cast over and over and over again. Just like before, this should be as simple as getting a blank pen out of here, throwing that into our pot builder. Uh, I guess we could make it out of wood, actually. I got some cobblestone out to make it out of cobblestone, but wood will do the trick. And then we can just throw that over here. And just like before, we can pull the uh, molten gold over that. And then once that's done, we can start pulling the molten steel over that as well. And that's going to get us the steel large plates. And then after that, we then just have the engineering processes and the sky stone. So let me unbookmark some of the other stuff here. We'll get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of all the blue magic stuff for now. The engineering processes, those are... Not too bad. For that, we're going to need to get an inscriber from Applied Energistics 2. These are used to inscribe all of the different processes that we get for the mod. And to do that, we're just missing one Fluix Crystal, which we should have in here. We do indeed. It does appear that uh, cloggage is taking place, which is to be expected. But uh, real quick, let's do one of these. Perfect. And in order to use this, it does require power, but if memory serves me right, I don't know if it can use power from here, it looks like it can. That does seem to have connected, so I think it should work. And the way you make the engineering processes here is by combining a printed engineering circuit, a piece of redstone, and a printed silicon. The printed engineering circuit and the printed silicon are both made in the inscriber themselves, and they're made using these different inscriber presses. For the engineering circuit, you need an engineering press, and for the silicon circuit, 
you need a silicon press. Uh, both of these are made using the extended crafting tables with different recipes. And so I guess it's at this point that I should probably go ahead and make another polar module, get our new combs set up, and then look at making this advanced crafting table. Okay, so not too long later, I got the remainder of the uh, steel large plates, those are good to go, and I've added uh, the new combs to our draw system, and I've added some more drawers over here, so we're now storing all of the new stuff. I did move charged soda squats over to here, we're not getting anywhere near as much of that as we are of everything else, and so I didn't really think it needed uh, its own compacting drawer. It also doesn't have a block form either, so I didn't think that was strictly necessary, and now that we've got a decent amount of black iron here, I think we can, in fact, go ahead and make this advanced crafting table. So, to do that, we're going to need about 16 of these basic components, which means we do need to, first of all, get about 16 of these, which, thankfully, is just two black iron crafted together. Once we have that, we should be able to craft all of those into basic components, like so, and then we can craft four of those, or sorry, eight of those, I guess, into basic catalysts, and then I think that's everything we need apart from two more of these black iron slates in order for us to get two basic crafting tables, one and two. And then to upgrade this, we again just need, uh, I think nine more of these, eight of which we're gonna craft into advanced components. I'll take one out and then we'll do this. No, let's go pull the one that I had in my inventory out. In that case, let me do this and this, perfect. At that point we can craft one of these and the table. Nice. So we'll go ahead and throw this down. This is, of course, going to allow us to make those presses that we saw earlier. And so we need, specifically, the calculation press, this one right here, and we need the silicon press, at least to start with. There are going to be other presses that we need, but initially, this is where we start. And these all have a fairly similar recipe. The calculation press is four charged soda squats, four steel, and one soda squats dust. The silicon version is the same, but just with another charged soda squats in the middle there. That is actually completely fine. And so let's quickly grind down two more soda squats over in here. Fantastic. It's at this point that the Twitch chat has pointed out that I am incorrect here. I need the engineering press, not the calculation press. Uh, engineering press, this one right here. Uh, again, similar recipe. This one is... I think the exact same, but just with the recipe swapped around, that's fine. Let's take eight steel, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then over in here, do we know how what it takes to make the silicon press? We do. And do we have what it takes to make the engineering press? We do. Nice. And so all we should have to do now in order to get four engineering circuits is take four diamonds and place them in here along with the engineering press like this. Annoyingly, with this basic inscriber, you can only make one circuit at a time, so you can't stack all of the diamonds in. You have to put one in and wait for it to finish before you can then put the other one in. You can hopper into this. Ideally, at some point in the not-so-distant future, we're going to look at upgrading to this circuit etcher here, which is not only faster, it also allows you to put stacks, I believe, of items in there. And so that's going to make our lives a lot easier going forward. Uh, you can also, of course, use modular routers here if you wanted to, uh, to put those in uh, specifically and take them out quite easily. For now, though, we only need four of these, so I don't know if it's really worth setting up the automation for it just yet. Instead, we can do silicon, and it's the exact same process here. Four silicon is going to get us four of these printed silicon, and then we just need four redstone. And once all four printed silicon is done, we can combine the printed silicon, the engineering circuit, and the redstone, and that's going to get us the four engineering processes required for the ME controller. Again, here, you can only put one of each item in at once, which does make it a little bit tedious. You can't put any more in, and so you do have to just kind of wait and uh, kind of babysit it a little bit. But once this is done, the final piece of the puzzle really is going to be getting the Sky Stone, which is actually a bit more complex than it might seem. To get the Sky Stone, I think we're going to have to get an ICB, because the Sky Stone, we can make by smelting Sky Stone. It's a Sky Stone block that we need. This unsmelted version we can get by using polished blackstone around our pure daisy. Polished blackstone is, of course, for blackstone. And a blackstone, we can make... Oh, we can make it with black concrete. I was going to use this recipe right here with the blue ice, but I think this is probably easier because black concrete should be very easy for us to do. And in fact, I'm going to leave these in here because that's where we need them. The black concrete here should be as simple as just crafting up the black concrete powder, which is black dye sand and gravel. From there, we can then go ahead and just use water to uh, to convert this, I'm fairly certain, in, in standard Minecraft fashion. Over here, I was slightly wrong about how long this takes. If I uh, pick these up, you'll see this is at 2%, and it's been going for quite some time. So I thought it would take 20 minutes. I think it might actually take 12 hours 
for this to convert, which is of course more time than I would like to wait. And so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna do this and uh, we can pick these up kind of as we uh, put these down here. If I do something like this, we can kind of pick these up, put these down. And this is not the most efficient way of doing it, I don't think, but like it's definitely a way of doing it. And as soon as we have, whoops, as soon as we have eight of these, we can then use these over around our pure daisy, which I think currently is just in the system because we've not used it in quite some time here. But if we throw it down in the Britannia section, we can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is gonna get converted into blackstone. We can then craft that blackstone into polished blackstone. And then we can use that polished blackstone again around the pure daisy to get skystone. We are gonna have to do this more than once because we do need more than eight skystone, but the process should be the exact same and really shouldn't be too difficult. In terms of the fluid seeds here, I think we're gonna to want to get a crystal growth accelerator, potentially multiple crystal growth accelerators to really increase the speed at which we can make pure soda squats crystals. For now, let me quickly do this and this. And once this converts, we'll go ahead and smelt it from regular skystone into skystone blocks. And while we wait for it to convert, I'm gonna go ahead and get yet more black concrete powder and do the exact same thing again. And once the second batch here is done, we can go ahead and take this, fantastic. The first batch is smelting and is smelted actually over in here. Let's do this and this. We do only need 12, we're gonna get uh, 16, that is fine. The Twitch chat has pointed out again here that um, I actually haven't unlocked the quests for Applied Energistics 2. The reason for that is that I need to make a wrench from power. Like that's the, the first quest in the power quest line. It's really not too difficult to make, not that I really think we need it. And I'm also gonna have to go ahead and pick up my energizing orb, which again, thankfully is fine. Let's do this. And then from there, we need a uh, Sirtis Quartz Crystal. That's completely fine. And that unlocks the quest line here with the charger and the inscriber. So I didn't actually make the charger because we didn't need it. The inscriber we have made, of course, but again, we're gonna have to make the charger, I guess, to complete that quest. The uh, charger itself, thankfully, not very difficult to make. We might need this going forward, really only if we run out of charged Sirtis Quartz, which is possible we do because uh, we don't have that much of it, but I don't really see that happening anytime soon. For now, I'll put that down on the power line as well. For those wondering, all you have to do is uh, take a set of squats and whack it into the charger. And then after a small period of time, that will get converted into a uh, charged set of squats. You can kind of tell the visual difference once it's been uh, converted. And uh, there you go, charged set of squats. Nice. And so uh, if we need more, we can do that in the future. And of course, we can go ahead and pick this up just as a way to complete that quest as well. Nice. So now that we have the Skystone over here, let's start getting stuff into the advanced crafting table. So for this, we need Skystone around the outside, here, 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 and here. We then need to have our four processes around like this. We need our steel casing in the middle, and we need our steel large plates as well. So you're gonna go there, you guys are gonna go around like this, and then now it's just those pure Fluix crystals that we need. To get those, there are two options. Could potentially look at getting the enrichment chamber, but the enrichment chamber uh, requires basic control circuits. That requires a metallurgic infuser, which requires a redstone furnace, which is even more machine frames. It also requires a resourceful furnace. There's a lot of crafting to be done there. We will do this eventually, but for today, I think the crystal growth accelerator here is gonna be a much easier setup because the Flux blocks are super easy. In fact, we should already have them uh, thanks to this, oh, never mind. That doesn't make flux blocks. That makes blocks of flux crystal. That's fine. We can do this and this. And then from there, we just need to get some quartz glass, which is glass and either set of quartz or nether quartz dust with flux ME glass cable. This is made with quartz fiber, which is even more quartz dust and glass with flux crystals and then crafted into the cable. All of that seems pretty straightforward. The only things that we don't have are really more quartz dust. In fact, we can do this and then we can do this and then from there we just need this and actually never mind we totally have what it takes to make it cool so we'll do one of these and can we do two of these we can do two of these the more of these we have the better because the more you have down the faster things will go and we do want to get more cable for this as well now i think we might need to make an energy acceptor to make this work so there doesn't seem to be any energy acceptor that used to be the way that you would convert from other power to apply energistics power you'll see here that uh, this says stores zero AE. AE is a different kind of energy than FE and RF. And so usually you have to convert between the two. The energy cell here might be able to do this. Um, in order for this to work, we would need uh, four Sirtis Quartz Crystals, four Fluix Dust, and another Quartz Glass. We uh, don't have the Quartz Glass, nor do we have the Fluix Dust. Thankfully, none of that should be too difficult for us to get. And then we can see if this actually does work for converting power. 
All right, so a few more dusts later. Let's see if this works. If I put this energy cell down on here, does that get power? It doesn't get power, which is awkward. And I think means, somewhat annoyingly, that um, the peck maker is going to force us to go through mechanism. Not force, I guess. We could put the fluid seeds down in the world and just let them convert passively over the course of about 12 hours. But I think the enrichment chamber is the way it's intended to go in this pack because I think that the energy acceptor that you could normally use for the crystal growth accelerators has been disabled. And so these are not going to be particularly useful for us. Instead, I think we're going to have to make the enrichment chamber. For that, as I mentioned a second ago, we do need to get a metallurgic infuser. This, first of all, requires a redstone furnace. This doesn't seem too difficult. Uh, the redstone furnace here, we're just missing two bricks, which we should definitely be able to get along with two copper gears as well. Those also not going to be too difficult. We just take eight copper and throw that into the smeltery. And then of course, pull that out into the uh, gear cast, which we made previously. We'll drop that down right about there. And then as for the resourceful furnace here, we are missing almost everything. We need to get another pitting machine frame, which is actually thankfully the easiest part of the equation. We also need two standard Minecraft furnaces. Again, fairly straightforward. The tricky bit is just the plastic that we don't have. We do have dry rubber though, and we can go ahead and smelt that up. So we've got enough there. I'm also fairly certain that we do have a tank full of plastic over here. And so we could go ahead and uh, use that to make more of these plastic sheets if we, uh, if we did in fact fully run out. Over here, let's do not bronze ideally. We've had mid bronze back, so I really need to work on clearing out that smeltery so that we don't end up making uh, random junk like we just did. Uh, I'll also get four gold in there, but I'll do that after we pull the copper out because otherwise I think there's a chance that we end up making some uh, some rose gold like we have done here as well, which is not what I want to do. Let's do this and I'll put this in because I think we can I think we can get both of our copper gears out before that's finished smelting. We totally can. Cool. And then we'll pull out the uh, the four gold in gear form as well. And at that point, we're kind of just missing the pity machine frame. Let me get another waxed machine block made in here for that we need more trim planks of course we do boom and boom over here i believe we do still have enough pressure in our chamber so we'll throw you in and that should once again get us another pt machine frame all of this is the kind of stuff that we could potentially look to automate once we have the applied energistics 2 system up and running which is kind of the whole reason why we're going through the rigmarole in the first place let's do this and let's do this to get our gold gear fantastic are our plastic sheets melted? They are indeed. And so bank over here, I think we should have everything for the resourceful furnace as soon as I pick up the aforementioned gold gear. We do indeed. And then as for the redstone furnace, I think we're also good to go. We are indeed. And that should be everything for the metallurgic infuser, assuming that we want to use our steel casing, which again, I think we kind of have to. So I'll take this and we'll go and put this down. We can definitely do with getting a better place for this, but for now I'll put it right about here. And we're also going to have to make two more steel casing, which means we need two more machine frames. Right now, we only have the one machine frame. That's completely fine. Of course, that does mean yet more PT machine frames, which means I do need to do uh, even more of this. How many more of these can I make? I can make eight. That's perfect. Let's make eight PT machine frames over here. Let's take this machine frame. We're going to put this in here, of course. For that, we need to get another 20,000 life points stacked up in there, which we will do momentarily. Is this done? It is indeed. Oh, it's almost there. I assume we're low on pressure now. We are indeed low on pressure. So if we want to do the other four, we're going to have to put some more coal into our compressors. That, of course, not going to be a problem. We've got over 10,000 coal at this point. And so now we can just do something like this, like this, and like this. We can then go ahead and take one of these pity machine frames, place it over in here again. Of course, as soon as we grab our wand, so we can right-click that and transform it into another machine frame. Perfect. That's going to get us the third machine frame, which I think is all that we need. We just need them to get 40,000 life points into our blood altar so that we can convert both of these machine frames into steel casing. One of those steel casings is going to be for the enrichment chamber, which we'll look at making in just a second. And the other one, of course, is going to be for the controller itself, which we'll also do once we have everything else made. All right, so we've got 20,000 life points. This is going to take a minute. Again, while we wait for that, down here, if we're going to make the enrichment chamber, we need two basic control circuits. The way we make these is using redstone and osmium. So osmium is our next bottleneck because we do not have osmium. And I'm going to take an educated guess here that we need to get an osmium B in order to get osmium. The osmium B 
is a lead bee and a silver bee. Thankfully, it's just a, a standard breed. It's not an egg situation. And then the osmium bee nectar block, which is up here, is going to be the lead honeycomb and the silver honeycomb. Okay, fine. That is not going to be a problem. I actually don't think we have a silver bee, right? We don't. And so a silver bee here is going to be a andesite bee and a lead bee. We definitely have the andesite bee, and we definitely have a lead bee. And so let me do a little bit more bee breeding here, and uh, we'll get that osmium bee set up inside of this uh, end apiary. All right, so quite a while later, we've been doing mostly the same stuff that we've been doing throughout the entire pack. We got ourselves a silver bee. We obviously got the silver bee nectar block. We placed that down. That got us silver honeycombs. We then bred the silver bee using silver with the lead bee to get the osmium bee. And then we got more silver honeycombs and more lead combs. And we used those to get the osmium bee nectar block, which is what we're working on uh, right here. I thought I had put the lead honeycombs in there. I think I did. I think what's happened here is that I have lost those lead honeycombs because I think I swapped from silver to osmium and I didn't do it in the right order. That is not ideal. Um, thankfully, we should be able to rectify that, I think. My lead bee is in here. Let me take my lead bee out. My lead bee belongs over in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the puller module back in here. So we start pulling all of these out again. That's fine. And then we'll go ahead and take the puller module out of here, like the middle one out, which I think is the one that uh, works with this second apiary. And then we'll put the lead bee back in like this, and that should hopefully start getting us some lead combs, which we can then use to get our osmium bee nectar block. And then we can use that to get our osmium for the circuits. Up here, in between stall the breeding, I did get yet another steel casing. And so we are good to go on that front. I can go and throw that down over in here. And so, yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go now. Let me go ahead and unbookmark all this. We have our osmium B. We're very close to our osmium B nectar block. As soon as we have it, we can get these two basic control circuits. So we can use this steel casing here to make the enrichment chamber. And then once we have the enrichment chamber, we can go ahead and use that to turn our Fluix seeds into pure Fluix crystals. And that is going to be so much easier than what we have been trying to do with the crystal growth accelerators, especially because the crystal growth accelerators don't work. All right, and not too long later, we finally have the Osmium B Nectar Block. That guy is down, and so now all of our stuff is being pulled in. We now also have Silver Honeycombs being pulled in here as well. Those are going to be useful going forward for uh, stuff like Electrum and whatnot, which we are going to need in the not-so-distant future. But hopefully now we should start to see Osmium coming in. We can add that to the wall and get that pulled in as well. We are also going to have to find, yep, a space for Silver to go. Uh, this wall is getting staggeringly tall but i think we do have to make it kind of yet taller silver is another one that i think i want in a compacting drawer i might put it down right about here it's a little awkward but i think it should get the job done and as soon as we have just a little bit of osmium we should be good to go so where in the world are my osmium cones he is very few seconds away from producing combs we're gonna hijack those combs instantaneously and, uh, and kind of push them to the front of the queue because we don't actually need that much osmium. Let's get an osmium draw going. So we'll do something like this. And then I'm going to steal these two. I'm going to process these over in here like this. Then it should get us two osmium ingots. Those two osmium ingots are going to go into the metallurgic infuser along with two redstone. That should slowly but surely produce for us two of these basic control circuits. Never mind. It looks like we need four redstone actually because you get 10 millibuckets of redstone per redstone in there and so we are going to need four in total for 40 millibuckets but once we have both of those basic control circuits back over here we can make ourselves the enrichment chamber we can throw the enrichment chamber down for now right next to our metallurgic infuser just to give it that little bit of power and now if we throw those fluix seeds in these are going to very quickly get turned into pure fluix crystals we need four of these in total and then that's it. That's all that we need in terms of getting the AE2 controller. A bit of a faff, definitely quite the craft, but I quite liked it. It's a good combination of all the different mods that we've been working with so far and even more bees. We've almost filled up that uh, third apiary there, which is crazy. But uh, now it's just a case of taking that controller and using it to set up a very basic applied energistics 2 system. For that, we just need to get a crafting terminal this guy right here we need to get an me drive and we need to get at least one 1k storage cell although there are multiple different tiers of storage cell and we'll probably look at getting something a bit better than just one 1k we might go with multiple 1k or we might go with uh, a few 4k we'll see how expensive or how hard 
those end up being to make. But for the most part, this and potentially an external storage, which is called a storage bus in applied energistics, is, uh, is all we're going to need as well. The storage bus there is going to allow us to connect our draw controller to our applied energistics 2 system, thus allowing our A2 system to access all of the stuff inside of our current storage drawers, which is good because otherwise we'd have to move all of those into their own ME storage cells. So now that we have the controller, these four items are actually not going to be that difficult for us to make. I think really the only difficult part about most of this, in fact, the recipe here has been changed on the ME drive. That is unfortunate. It means we're going to have to get yet another steel casing. Uh, again, thankfully, not a problem now that we have so many of these pity machine frames. We can, of course, convert those and get more steel casing very quickly. But for the most part, a lot of the crafts here just require more processors. We need some logic processors, which we don't yet have the pattern for. We need more engineering processors, and we also need some calculation processors. And so real quick, let's go ahead and get the calculation press along with the logic press. Both of those are gonna take us to the full set of presses. We'll then have the engineering, the silicon, the calculation and the logic. There is another press, that being the universal press from the Lazier AE2 mod. This is an add-on mod to Applied Energistics 2 that adds some quality of life upgrades. It is a little pricey to make. I think we'll probably look to make this in the next episode because we need it to get into other stuff from Lazier AE2 like the circuit etcher. But for the time being, I think it's gonna be a little expensive, especially with that uh, singularity in the middle there. And so real quick, what we'll do here, in terms of getting the calculation press, we just need charged status quartz, steel, and status quartz dust, easy enough. And for the inscriber logic press, it's kind of the same deal, steel and charged status quartz. Charged status quartz, we've got more than enough of, and Cetus Quartz Dust, we don't have any of, but of course, as we've been doing throughout the episode, we can go ahead and do something like this. We should really look at getting uh, either a pulverizer or maybe a, a crusher for mechanism to allow us to uh, to make the Cetus Quartz Dust much, much faster and uh, without having to do any manual cranking. But for now, boom, there's our calculation press and boom, there is our logic press, potentially 12 logic presses, but I don't really think we're going to need that many of them. The process here, is exactly the same as it was for the engineering press. As far as the logic press goes, we just put in some gold. So over here we can do logic press and gold. That's gonna get us a logic circuit. And then we can combine that with a silicon press and some redstone to get the logic processor. And then the same is also true for the Certus Quartz crystal here. We can put in the calculation press with the Certus Quartz crystal. It might have to be a pure Certus Quartz crystal in order to make the printed calculation press. That does make it a little more awkward, but we do of course have the enrichment chamber now, and therefore we can actually make the pure Certus Quartz crystals fairly easily by just throwing the Certus Quartz into here, and that's gonna get us a pure crystal, which we can then throw in, and again, it's just a case of getting the, uh, the pressed silicon. You can make a lot of this stuff faster if we get some acceleration cards, which I think is almost certainly going to be worth our while. The acceleration card here is made with a Fluix crystal along with an advanced card. The advanced card is iron, diamond, redstone, and that calculation processor. So real quick, if we get some silicon over here, we should be able to do silicon press. That's not silicon press. We should be able to do silicon press with silicon. That's going to somewhat slowly get us a piece of silicon. We can then combine that, of course, with redstone and our calculation press. That's gonna get us the first calculation processor. And then that's going to allow us to get two acceleration cards. And you can see on the right here that there's a maximum of three that we can fit into this inscriber. And I do think that as soon as we get the first two of them here, one and two, we should use those to get another calculation processor, which hopefully this time is gonna be a tiny bit faster. If we do the same thing again, you'll see this is a little bit quicker, albeit still not incredibly fast. If we want it to be incredibly fast, we really have to upgrade to the circuit etcher from Lazier A2. But for now, this is kind of our best course of action. We'll get another pure Certus Quartz Crystal. We'll do the exact same thing again. That's gonna get us two more of these acceleration cards. And it's probably gonna be in our best interest as well to get just multiple inscribers. I think three is probably a good number for us here. The reason I'm gonna go for three is that again, if we look a little bit further ahead and we're all out of planks, eh? uh, but if we look a little bit further ahead at the recipe for the circuit etcher, the circuit etcher does require three 
inscribers. In fact, if I press U here, you can see the recipe for that circuit etcher and it needs those three inscribers. And so if we make three, that's going to allow us to make multiple different parts of the processor all at once. And later on down the line, once we do want to upgrade to the circuit etcher, we can just pick up all three inscribers that we have, use them to make the circuit etcher, and then we really don't have to worry about it after that. And so back over here, let's do this, let's do this. And let's also grab some of that basic universal cable to make sure that both of these are connected up, fantastic. And real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch more of these acceleration cards so that all of these are full. And then I think we'll also make just a couple of each of the processors so that we can kind of more easily get through all of the crafts for all of these different components. So a quick update here, I have put down the inscribers and I've kind of moved them a little bit as well to make room for these hoppers because the inscribers are side dependent. You can't, for example, hopper into the top and put an item into the middle slot. You have to input into the side. And so right now we have three inscribers all with three acceleration cards and I've just placed down hoppers and those hoppers are feeding in the required materials. So again, gold for logic circuits, pure status quartz for calculation circuits and diamond for engineering circuits. And then we'll also do the same, I guess at some point we could probably take this out. Now I don't think we need that many calculation. We can swap you out for silicon that's going to get us all of the printed silicon that we need and then once all that is done we can start looking at getting some processes it would be nice if we had hoppers on all sides or even modular routers i guess on all sides because that would allow us to even further automate this especially when it comes to making the processes because again right now if we do want to pivot to making processes we have to uh, take out all of the stuff that's currently in here and then we still have to kind of go all the way back to doing things one at a time. We have to do one logic circuit, one printed silicon, and one redstone to make this work. You can automate this fairly easily with modular routers, which I think is something we will look at doing potentially in the future, although it really does depend if we end up going for that circuit etcher, because if we're gonna go for the circuit etcher, there's not really much point in spending time automating this. Although chat is right here, I keep forgetting about the fact that we do have uppers in the pack. And so I could almost certainly then in that case, get two more uppers and then also get at two more hoppers. And without fiddling with modular routers at all, I think we could probably, and I needed three hoppers actually, not two. I think I could fairly easily automate the production here. We do need one more chest to make that happen for one more hopper, but that should be good to go. That way over here, we can put, for example, the printed circuits in the top, we can put redstone in the middle, and then we will have to reroute our basic universal cable here, but we can go ahead and put the printed silicon in the bottom like this, and that is gonna go ahead and continue making the logic processes. And if I'm not mistaken, that should just work. I can't help but notice it's not working. Again, that's because you don't have power, Isaac, you fool. I need to do something awkward like this. Uh, the good news is that the outputs do stack, much like in uh, the other circuits here. And annoyingly, you can't <laughs> input power to the front of the inscriber, which is just horrible. Let's break this. Let's break this. Let's put the inscriber down backwards. This might have ended up being more effort than it's worked. But if we do this, now the top and the bottom should be set correctly. And we can redo this and this and everything is going to work. And we can, of course, replace in our acceleration cards as well. Cool. And so now that's gonna continually make us the logic processes. And then of course, uh, we can do the exact same thing for the engineering circuits and the calculation circuits as soon as this is done. Okay, so not too long later, we've got quite a few of each processor. You do generally need more logic than anything else and then more engineering than calculation. Calculation is usually the one that's used the least. We'll go ahead, throw all of those into the system. Whilst I was waiting for those to get processed, I did make some more steel large plates. I also got another machine frame cooking over here. This is on its way to being transformed into a steel casing and should get there as soon as the uh, life points here hit zero. That of course is going to allow us to make the ME drive. And I did also do a little bit of grindstoning over here as well to get some quartz dust and some fluix dust. The quartz dust is needed because we need some more quartz glass. The quartz glass here is going to be used for making the ME crafting terminal. For this, we need a standard crafting table, easy enough, along with one calculation processor and one ME terminal. The ME terminal requires this illuminated panel. The illuminated panel is where we need that quartz glass, along with glowstone, iron, and redstone. And then other than that, we need the logic processor with both a formation and annihilation core. These are both made in the same way. One of them uses nether quartz and one of them uses certus quartz. 
Nice. That should be everything for the ME terminal. We can then upgrade that to an ME crafting terminal and we can take that off the list. Then we have the ME drive, which looks pretty straightforward. That is where we need to get the steel casing. We'll go and throw that in the center of our advanced crafting grid here. And we'll also grab those steel large plates that I just pulled out as well. Those are gonna go in the four corners, one, two, three, four, along with two engineering processes and two Fluix cable, which we have, boom and boom. That's gonna get us one ME drive. And then from there, to use the ME drive, we need a 1K ME storage cell. Now, both of these recipes have actually been tweaked to require the dissolution chamber from industrial foregoing. Thankfully, we do have the dissolution chamber. And so uh, if we throw this down on our somewhat haphazard wall of machines here, all we should have to do is fill that up with some honey because each one of these recipes requires honey. We're going to need three buckets worth in total. That should be fine if we do this and this, we can do one, two, and three, and then we can go dump all three of those into the dissolution chamber. Nice. Once we have that, in terms of making the storage housing, we just need quartz glass, redstone, and by the looks of it, specifically pure certus quartz, which thankfully we have a decent amount of. So we'll do this. We'll go grab yet more quartz glass from here using that uh, quartz dust that we made earlier. And we'll also grab some redstone. As far as the storage component here, how hard is the 4K storage component? The 4K storage component requires three 1K storage components, I see. We'll make one of these for now, and then we can always upgrade later on down the line. So four Certus Quartz, a bunch of redstone, and the final piece was just the logic processor, which is fine. We'll take that as well. Perfect. And so back over here, let's put in the, I think it was two redstone and uh, three quartz glass. Is that correct? Never mind. This is vibrant quartz, not any old quartz, I see. That's uh, where we're getting confused here. Thankfully, Vibrant Quartz is just regular quartz glass with glowstone, which is thankfully fairly straightforward. We'll take three of them. Let me just check that the uh, 1K storage cell also doesn't need any. It doesn't. So we need one, two of you. That should, there we go, craft us the storage housing. And then once that's done, we can just swap out the uh, ingredients for the 1K storage component. And there we go. Once we have both of those, we can go ahead and craft them together to get our 1K storage cell, which is gonna go inside of our ME drive. This is probably not the final place that we'll leave it, but uh, we can always move it fairly easily if we want. And then the last item we mentioned was the ME storage bus. For this, we just need one regular piston along with one sticky piston. And then we also need to get a regular ME interface. This is made with iron, glass, and then one more of those formation and annihilation cores, thankfully. These are made in sets of two, and so we do have enough left to do something like this. Nice. And again, that's going to allow us to hook up our draw controller. And so now I think we have basically everything that we need to hook this all up and make this work. The only thing we don't have is power coming over to where I'm going to put the ME controller. I kind of want to have the ME controller right here where the storage network root is, because I think we can probably quite safely get rid of the old simple storage system. The idea is that we're gonna have our ME controller here. And then as soon as I take that down, I do kind of realize that we need more uh, of the Fluix cable here because the Fluix cable is kind of like the uh, network cable from simple storage network. So we do need to make more of this if we're gonna actually connect things up. And so real quick, let's try and not lose that. Let's put you and you back down and let's see if we can't make uh, quite a large amount of this. I think we should be able to, we've got a decent amount of quartz dust now, and that's going to allow us to make a large amount of ME Fluix cable. And for the time being, all we really need to do is kind of get rid of this cable here. It's a little easier to do now that we have the jetpack. And we're going to go ahead and put down our storage bus onto the draw controller, like this. And then we're gonna try, whilst falling, to connect, you gotta hold shift as well to do this, uh, connect the cable. And then we're gonna run that cable back and along and it'd be easier if I just did this kind of up on the roof like this, that way I don't have to uh, try and place it specifically onto the uh, the old cable, which uh, is much more difficult to do. And we're gonna run that over to the controller that's gonna go in the ground here. Uh, let's do something like this. Let's do something like this. And then for now, let's actually just go ahead and move the ME drive over to the controller. Much like before with the simple storage network, this will work. And then let's also do something like this and like this to allow us to actually access the system via this crafting terminal. 
So now the only problem is power, and I'm going to do something absolutely horrific, chat. I'm going to do one of these. This is an extremely temporary solution. In the next stream, we'll probably come back and we'll look at getting wireless power set up so that we can move power from our reactor over to our A2 system very quickly. But as you can see in here now, we do have access to all of the things in all of our storage drawers within this A2 terminal. And what we can also do is we can start putting items from these chests into this 1K drive. So the way this works is a little finicky. Essentially here, each one of these drives has a certain number of bytes and a certain number of types. The number of types is the number of total different items you can put in. So each different item is a different type. So if I were to put in gold and soda squats, this would be two types. If I were to put in the wrench and the silicon as well, this would be four types. And so in total, this cell can only hold a total of uh, 63 different items, different types of items, but it can hold quite a large quantity of each of those different items. And if I'm not mistaken, the way this works, each item is kind of like one bit and there are eight bits in a byte. And so this has 1024 bytes, which means that if I was to put in one gold, I think I would take up one byte effectively, but I could also kind of still fit seven more gold into that one byte. It's only when I tick over into the ninth gold that it would take up a second byte, if that makes sense. Essentially, the, uh, the, the long and short of it is that the top number there, the bytes, is how much kind of big space you have, how much stuff you can put in, and the small number is just how many different types of items you can put in. But it does kind of loosely relate to, uh, to the, the way computers handle uh, bits and bytes. Essentially, we can give this a try, actually. Uh, right now, it's got zero bytes and zero types. It's going to be a little awkward, actually. I need to find something that I don't have in a storage drawer, because if I put my gold in here, the gold shouldn't go into here. It didn't. It went straight into the, uh, the drawer for gold, which is what we want it to do. Instead, if we use bread as an example, we can go ahead and put bread in. If I put one bread in here, that bread should go in here, and it did. And it used nine of 1,024 bytes. Am I losing my mind? Okay, so that didn't work. I'm not quite sure why. It looks like it kind of does work. Again, if I put in one bread, for some reason that one bread uses nine bytes, but if I were to go ahead and put in seven more bread here, that still only uses nine bytes. You'll see it doesn't change. It's only when I add the ninth bread that it moves over and takes up a tenth byte. And then again, from there, I can go ahead and add another seven here. And that still doesn't increase the number of bytes used. It's only when I add, again, the ninth that it moves up to 11 bytes. And when it does, it only goes up by one. So for some reason, that first piece of bread took up nine bytes. I'm not quite sure why. But after that, every single other item from there seems to be following the correct formula where eight items equates to one byte. And then if I were to put in a different item, let's say this uh, wrench here, that would go ahead and take up a second type. And so essentially, if we wanted to get rid of these chests, if we wanted to kind of empty everything out here and put it into ME drives, we would need either enough drives or big enough drives. There are higher tier drives. We have the 1K, the 4K, the 16K, and the 64K. They all have the same number of types though as well. And so no matter how big you go, the bigger drives just hold more of whatever it is you have. If you have a lot of different items, which I kind of think is what we have in here. We've got a lot of rogue items. A lot of our stuff that is in large quantities is currently stored in our storage drawers. And so I think for us, it's probably more well worth it to have more drives of a lower byte capacity than it is to have fewer drives of a higher byte capacity, if that makes sense. If I start dumping stuff in here, you'll see that we very quickly start to run out of type capacity. We're doing much better on byte capacity. And so I think in order to kind of fully get rid of these chests here, it should just be a case really of crafting just a couple more of those 1K ME storage cells. Okay, so I quickly crafted up three more ME storage housing and three more 1K storage components. Again, we could have gone with 4K, but it's just more crafting. And right now, uh, the first drive here is basically full on types and nowhere near full. I say nowhere near full. It's, it's almost full on bytes, but it's much less full on bytes than it is on types. So I think the types are definitely where we want to, uh, to start here. And so let's see if we can't get all of our items into these drives. I have a sneaking suspicion that we might still not have enough types. All right, so it actually took one more ME storage cell here to get all of the items in. And when I say all the items, I mean all of the items apart from our rogue bees here, because all of these bees are going to individually take up one slot on their own. Again, going forward, we could put down two more storage busters, just like we've done on our 
to our controller, we could put two more on each of these white compact chests and that would give us access to the contents of those. So we could use that as kind of a quick way of adding more storage in the future, should we wish. Real quick, I do want to uh, sort by number of items and I would also like to sort by descending. There we go. So we've got the uh, items we have the most of at the top and the ones we have the least of at the bottom. Perfect. Auto search is how I like it on. So when I uh, open this up, I can start typing. You can also change this to uh, JI search as well, uh, which I'm not a fan of, but some people do like uh, if they're typing in machine frame, it links it and does both at the same time. I prefer uh, just standard auto search, but there's a ton of options there. Uh, you can also change uh, the terminal a little bit as well. It's kind of hard to see because my uh, GUI scale is quite large here, but this is all ready to go. This of course, right now, isn't particularly impressive because at the moment, this is kind of the exact same as the simple storage network, but it requires power. And so currently it's kind of a bit of a downgrade. The ME drives are cool, but the real power from A2 is gonna come in the next episode. We're gonna look at getting into some auto crafting. Uh, we'll look at uh, potentially getting into some of the lazier A2 stuff as well. So we can start making circuits and stuff much, much faster. Uh, we can also look at potentially working with fluids. The import and export buses are gonna make sending items around much, much easier as well. And we're really gonna get into uh, the, the weeds, I think a little bit more on A2 and really start to unlock and harness the power of the mod, but that of course is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2 there.